So there are a number of project management certifications out there, but as you say, over the last few years, mm -hmm. there's been um, a plethora of other organisations, yes. teaching organisations, who have come up with their own version and standards. I think what that has done, that has made people more aware yes. of what they can do, and as a consequence, they are now being more selective in terms of, well, this is what I would like to try and do. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Silver Show. I've got Anthony Francis here, and of course we're exploring about business and success. Anthony, welcome back. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you didn't go off and do some course. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us about um, project management essentials for non-project managers. Yeah, so essentially... book there, yeah. Yeah, so project manager essentials, um, uh, the course, mm -hmm. what people get when they come on this course is if they are new to project management, if they've been involved in a, in a, in a project themselves, but they, are, they, have, they have come into it purely by the fact that mm -hmm. they happen to be the person who someone has says, we'd like you to take over this task. Yes. And they haven't formally had any previous background in terms of methodology mm -hmm. or process. This course would allow them to go away after they've attended mm -hmm. it with the key areas, the key fundamentals mm -hmm. that are involved in project management. So it will start off with initiation. It will then look to do around planning. It will talk around the sort of controlling elements. Mm -hmm. It will then look to do around the implementation. And then right at the end, it will then do the close. So it will cover those main key processes yeah. and what's involved in actually covering those key processes. At the same time, Anton, isn't project management is like anyone starting a business as well? To a certain extent. Yeah, well, project management is about planning. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, any of those key areas in terms of the process mm. are important to anyone who actually wants to get involved in, a pro in, yes. uh, in, in managing their own business. Yeah. They have to plan the business. They have to actually then go around doing the implementation. They have to do all the control. So you're right. Yeah. A number of the key skills that are involved in the project management mm. process are fundamental to anyone wanting to start a business. So like the Silburn Show, for argument's sake, I mean, I've got to project manage it for years, if anything like that. That's something which is integral that you advise, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, I think with the, the, the key thing as well with project management, and, and as you say with, with, your, with the, uh, the mm. Silborn Show, mm. is that you're always continuously learning from it. Yeah. So the idea with project management is that you continuously improve. Right. So once you've actually done the, the particular project, and then, you, uh, and then you close it, you, you then look at what, what lessons have I learned so that if I then have to do another similar project, right. I can actually then put in to the start of that so project in order like to best improve. Practices as well. Indeed, yeah. Because what you don't want to do <clears throat> is to reinvent the wheel again or mm. to make the same mistakes again. Right. So with right. project management, the idea is that you're continuously improving, improving by learning from the lessons um, that you've learned mm. as you go through each stage of the process. And for someone who, has, who wants to go on a career in project management, can they just, okay, I finished business school, I want to go into project management, they spend to go on that course or they go to uh, is it normally a company that normally send persons or um, people can just get up and say, okay, I want to do project management? Well, it, like any other um, um, certification course, you can actually um, go online, find a company that, was, yeah. that is, I mean, there are, as we just mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. there are a number of organizations now, I think upwards of about maybe 10 plus yes. with different um, certification levels. Mm. So you can obviously go online, you can go and attend a course, and then you can go and um, get yourself certified in one of many different mm. um, accreditation courses that are out there. However, I think the one thing that um, any company who is, w would be looking for mm -hmm. was that practical knowledge of someone who actually has had the experience of managing a project or a program. That is something that they're going to look at. That is something that will be fundamental because yeah. simply coming along to somebody and saying, I've got the theory, is fine. Yeah. Um, but unless you've actually uh, undertaken the, um, the practice of managing a program yes. or a project uh, in whatever area that is, that is going to be the key thing that companies will be looking for, your experience in that area. So therefore, persons who are interested in that area need to sort of buddy someone like yourself or be apprentice. They do need yeah. to buddy, or what mm -hmm. tends to happen is they end up falling into it by default. They're, they're given a task to do yes. by an organisation. They end up then maybe doing events. Yes. Those events then turn into projects. Mm -hmm. Those projects potentially may come into programmes. But it doesn't and also I suppose by default they may learn some of the key fundamentals as yes. they go along. 
but ultimately um, those key process stages that, that we talked about mm -hmm. um, a minute ago, initiation, mm -hmm. um, the planning, the controlling, the implementation and then the close, there are some key areas in each of those, uh, each of those process areas that are fundamental that you should also be aware of. Now, now you mentioned about, um, we were talking about business earlier and uh, the spring budget just yep. recently came out yep. and uh, when it did one of the hot topics was this implication for tax increases for those who are self-employed. What, in your opinion, is this? Are the points of a new budget, and how could it be said that the government is supporting like business? Because many people are saying the government has backtracked. Uh, well, I, I, I certainly think with the um, increase for self-employed people with their NI, mm -hmm. um, that certainly wasn't something I was expecting because anybody who is a self-employed person or wanting to start up their own business. Mm -hmm. What they're looking for is a little bit of support and because clearly, as well. yeah, they're looking for some incentive. Um, it, you have to remember that I think it's about eighty percent of, of of SMEs, small mm. to medium size organisations, make up the overall bulk of the companies that are out there. Mm. So really, what the government should be looking to do is to incentivise small businesses, entrepreneurial. Um, flair for want of a better yes. word, in order that they're not penalised for taking the risk mm. of going out there and actually setting up on their own because it is a risk yes. um, with no safety net. So unless perhaps you, you, know, you, you come from maybe a, a well-to-do well family, family yeah. where you've got some support well, mechanism, ultimately what someone is doing, they're actually thinking, right, I've got an opportunity, I've seen a gap in the marketplace mm -hmm. and I'm going to actually um, turn that opportunity into a business. Right. So for them to do that, they need to be given some incentive. And I think what the government have done in the budget by increasing NI, as an mm. example, doesn't show that they are not necessarily on the side of business, mm. but it shows that they are um, not incentivizing somebody to go into business because of that extra um, amount they'd have to pay on their own. So it would be very unwise for them to call an election now, isn't it? Well, <laughs> so we're going to put I, I, I think um, I think the government have got enough on their plate, but certainly that would be another yes. area that, especially yes. in their manifesto, they said they would not do it. And, that, and, that, and that's uh, on a political level. That, that's another thing. Uh, people are saying that once they deviate away from their manifesto, which is two strikes now. Two, when I say two strikes, one, they went into government with another leader, and now it's a different leader which is leading them. And now they broke the manifesto. So therefore, people are saying now, is it the government setting themselves up for a snap election with, on the back of a not so popular Labour leader? Well, I, I think you're right. I mean, there, it, if I was a betting man, I would probably say right now, there wouldn't be a snap election only because we're in the middle of Brexit yeah. and, all that, and all the negotiations, I think that would create even more uncertainty in the exactly. marketplace right now, yeah. Yeah. which the markets would not like. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would um, undermine um, you know, UK PLC to a, great, to, you know, to a greater degree. Mm -hmm. So personally, I think that um, what Theresa May and the government will now do is see that through mm -hmm. rather than call a snap election. But you're right, mm -hmm. um, history has shown that governments that break their promises yeah. tend to be punished when they go to the ballot box. Yes. So I think they'd do well to, to remember Hold history fire. and, and uh, <laughs> stick to what they said they were going to do. In my opening, I mentioned about the um, employment versus entrepreneurship, the notable directionality away from the idea of the nine to five towards entrepreneurship. We are seeing that in the UK too, even if you fall in the scope of entrepreneurs now, what does this move mean for employability and let's say the recruitment industry? And I tag on to that, is that the government is sensing this swing. So they are trying to capture it with this nice rise again. Um, well, if you read what um, the Chancellor said, he was trying to make the uh, playing field fair. Yeah. Um, because clearly... Bring them closer together. Yeah. So he's saying, okay, so yes, if you're a, a self-employed person, mm -hmm. why should you not be paying a similar amount of um, national insurance mm -hmm. to what a employed person is mm -hmm. paying? Um, and yeah, and as I said, I think the main reason why there is, there is meant to be that slight incentive is because the, the self-employed person is taking mm -hmm. a risk. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whereas a, an employed person has the benefits of if they have of, of sick pay yeah. and all the other benefits that yeah, go with it. Yeah, and they it. were showing the distinction whereby the only thing what the self-employed had was just a lower rate of NIS, but the employed had all these different exactly um, yeah. cushions. Yeah, so I don't really think that the you know by them um, trying to level things out on the NI really does anything. Mm -hmm. And I think really, to be honest, if somebody wants to be 
um, entrepreneurial or they have that flair, mm. I don't think this NI increase will potentially put them off. But what yes. I think it does do is put certain doubts, seeds in people's mind mm. to think, you know, maybe I should maybe put it off till later or whatever. Mm. But I think, you know, the employability against the entrepreneur side that you mentioned, yeah. clearly I think there is more tendency now, I feel, for people to want to go off and do their own thing. Yes. I, I think, um, as I mentioned with the internet, and being able for, and people have been able to see so many opportunities now mm -hmm. it has made that it's meant that people themselves have suddenly thought to them thought why don't i try this particular thing what yes. you know they've seen people do video blogs and become successful mm -hmm. they've seen people set up online businesses and become successful mm -hmm. um, they've seen a multitude of different areas where in the past these were businesses that would never have taken off yes. and they've now become successful so i think that in itself means that people are, are, are more inclined to think well rather than leave it till too late Better I'll have a now. go I'll have a go now yeah, yeah. and I think you'll see in a lot of the younger folk mm -hmm. the sort of millennials who have um, are probably more are more able to embrace this quicker yes. than say the, uh, the, the the older generation yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're sometimes the, trying to get into these things yeah like I mean that, I think yeah. I think the baby boomers you know you know uh, of, one, of, of one of <laughs> of of uh, you know of which I am one. Yeah. Clearly, we we want to embrace the technology, mm -hmm. but I think with the millennials, they are right in it. You know, yeah. they have grown up they with live it. all. Of, yeah, they live it. You I know, mean, it, I mean, kids are twenty four, four seven. five, six, seven years of age. They're it, it. it's 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 like a, knowledge. Yeah, it's it's second nature to them. So I think that in itself allows people to do things that they perhaps never had the opportunity to do before, and that's why I think the area of entrepreneurship will increase mm. over the years and I think people will be less inclined because let's face it we all know now we, mm. we all now know that jobs for life are gone yes um, and most people are aware they're going to have to have a number of different careers yes. um, in their lifetime and so what they're doing is they're saying right okay well if that one I'll try this mm -hmm. um, you know maybe with a couple of friends from college or uni mm. I'll if it doesn't work okay well we've learned we've learned from our, yeah. our from our mistakes and we'll try something again so we project manage that one we'll, we'll project board. management that one and if it if it doesn't work then we'll learn from it and we'll we'll, we'll start something else up now the the to where you are now it is through some of some successes that you have had in the past what do you share some of those memorable uh project successes that you've had in the past? I know I have a few, but you can share, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose some of the ones that come to mind um, recently. So I was um, the program manager mm -hmm. for a leading charity in the UK, mm -hmm. working with um, a, a well-known retailer. Um, and that charity raised 18 million mm -hmm. um, over 18 months, which has become one of the most successful partnerships um, in the UK with that particular yeah. uh, retailer. So that was a very satisfying and very successful um, project yes. for that charity and certainly raised a you know, significant amount of money for them. Another one was, uh, in fact, the same charity. I was able to um, project manage their relocation from yes. their existing premises they had in, in, um, in North London mm -hmm. to new premises in, um, in, in East London. Yes. And even though that took about a year or so, that was a very satisfying project, mainly because of the different areas of involvement, right from actually selecting the building. I looked at over 30 buildings for mm -hmm. them, down to actually then managing the financials, the, um, the actual move, yes. um, et cetera. So that was also a very highly successful mm -hmm. um, pro project for me. And just to finish off, uh, many years back, I was also um, the project director for um, uh, managing the, uh, the project for British Airways. Mm -hmm. And that particular project, raised, uh, sorry, didn't raise, it was a program of an IT infrastructure refresh. And that was about 250 million. And that's interesting. And you're able to achieve those because you were in there as a program manager. Correct. And project manager at the same yep. time. But before you were able to do that, what was the key thing that made you start it then, before I finish? What, get involved in project yeah, management? Ah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So start from the top, we'll come back. You know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's funny. You're embodying someone, entrepreneur, it, it, yeah. apprentice, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, um, well, if I'm really honest, yes. I, uh, what, I was in operations, I was an operations yeah. manager, mm -hmm. and I saw an opening for a project director role, mm -hmm. uh, and I applied for that role, mm -hmm. even though I hadn't had any previous project management experience. Okay. It was just an area that I thought was personal development that I maybe would be good at. Mm -hmm. I to my surprise, got the role. Yeah. I used to say, oh my God. And <laughs> I did actually say, oh my God. 
And what I quickly realised when I was taking my first few meetings mm. was that I didn't really have the proper methodology understanding in terms of project management. So mm. what I then did was, off my own back, I then went away and took a Prince course, yes. Prince 2, in order to learn the fundamentals. Because some of the people that you might be speaking to must be saying... Well, I think I went in there with the best intentions of yeah. common sense, thinking, well, what can be so difficult? Yes, yes. But what I didn't realise was actually there is a great deal that you need to know in terms of your management skills with teams, yes. um, how you um, process the project in terms mm -hmm. of the different areas that we talked about in the methodology, mm -hmm. how you actually go around um, managing milestones, how you go around managing um, the quality aspect. Yes. The whole aspect of project management mm. was something that was completely new and I had to quickly um, get, get myself up to speed right. in order to, to, get, to, to, to get on point. That's interesting. I think that's, that's, that's very crucial. Now, Anthony, if somebody wants to get hold of you to, um, for your services, how do they get hold of you? Well, they can um, uh, get me via my website, yes. um, projectmanageressentials.com. Yes. Uh, they can also um, send me a, a, an email, yes. uh, which is um, info at anthony at projectmanageressentials.com, or they can call me. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, of course, we'll put Anthony's details on, the, on our Facebook page, not on Facebook page, on our website as well with his profile, so people can also find you as well once you come on the show. You know? And before we go, Anthony, what would you say is your favourite mantra or favourite quote or something that inspires you? Um, um, I would say, well, especially as I'm a project manager, mm. that um, people don't uh, plan to fail, mm. uh, but they fail to plan. Right. And I think that's the thing that, you know, in life and also in, as, as a mantra for me, when we go, when we go ahead to do something, mm -hmm. we don't go there to fail. fail. Um, but what we haven't done is we haven't actually planned how we're going to get there. Right. And so if you don't have a plan of how you're going to get there, yeah. how, are you, how are you going to know once you've reached? And what road you're going on, you won't know where exactly. you're Exactly. So okay. I think that's something that people should um, always be mindful of, that we don't um, plan to fail, uh, we fail to plan. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony, that was great. Any last word? Um, www.projectmanageressentials.com That's it. Anthony, listen, it was great having you on the show. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard. And uh, what I'd like to share with you is that businesses these days are changing. Everything is now changing. There's an evolutionary process going on, and we just have to move with the times as well. So without further ado, thank you so much for watching the show. And to hear more about Anthony Francis, follow us on our website, silburn.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram with the hashtag Silburn TV. Thank you so much for joining us and see you next time. Hi, my name is Anthony Francis and I've just been on the Silburn TV. Uh, I'd like you to subscribe uh, either via their hashtag, their website or their Instagram. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like and don't forget to comment, but first subscribe. Thank you.